Hey there friends, my name is Linda Dolkey and today I'm doing um, a beautiful card with you. Um, I'm really into background techniques. I love anything that builds up a beautiful background and this to me looks lovely. It looks like a forest in the mist. So of course I'm calling this the misty forest technique. Um, very, very simple to do and you could get a variety of um, different effects depending on what colors you use. So I'd say once you know how it's done, um, which is very, very simple, then uh, go off and experiment and you will probably come up with some special effects of your own. So, um, I am creating, like you can see here, a forest and I want it to look, um, I've actually got a couple of cards I've done with the same thing. Um, I actually want it to look like the trees at the back here kind of disappearing into the mist and the ones here in the foreground are more distinct. So um, this was actually the first one that I did, this one here, and then I messed up my sentiment at the top so I had to put this panel across the top and I really wanted this look, not this look, so then I did it again. Um, but I'll show you how I did it. I'm starting with a piece of neutral cardstock. Now I'm using grey granite, but you could also use smoky slate, Sahara sand. They would both work really, really well. Um, you could probably get an okay effect with crumb cake as well, but um, I think something a little bit more grey is probably uh, best suited to this technique rather than beige because the grey kind of mixes in with the with the mist. So what I'm going to do to start with, I'm actually going to grab a sponge brayer. I'm a big fan of brayers and these sponge ones are so easy to, to use compared to the old rubber brayers. Um, and here I have some white craft ink. I'm going to add the white craft ink to my brayer and I'm really only doing, you could also get this effect with a sponge but I'm starting with the brayer because I want to build up a bit of even colour at the top here. Now, when you do this first, it won't look like very much is happening. I'm just trying to give it a bit of colour. Probably about the top third or so of the, of the piece of paper. And that's going to be enough for now. So we've just sort of added this bit of a, bit of a white, white wash look to the top. And then I'm going to use a stamp. So I'm using this little tree from the most wonderful time stamp set. This one's in our current uh, August to December mini catalog and it's part of the most wonderful time specialty bundle um, which is a which is a special kit that you can get a whole bunch of things and this is one of the, the items in the kit. But my favorite stamp in the whole set is this tree. I've done lots of different things with this tree and I think it's super cute. It gives you a really realistic tree. If you don't have this set, some uh, any realistic tree would work. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm pretty sure you could get a good effect with this snow front um, tree here. Um, and you could also get a great effect with the In the Pine stamp set that's just come out. Um, I haven't got that one yet, but it's on its way. So um, when it does come, I'm going to try that one as well with this one. But any realistic tree, and as you can see, it's quite a small stamp, not particularly big. But the, top, the stamp itself ends up looking like lots of trees when you stamp it together. And I'm only using one colour for all these trees. I know it looks like there's several colours of different greens on there, but it's actually only one. So I'm going to start. This is my Mossy Meadow ink pad. Um, I think it's best if your ink pad is not too wet. But if your ink pad is very wet, then my suggestion to you would be to maybe stamp off. But we're going to start at the top with the trees furthest behind or furthest back. So I'm just going to add one or two here and then the stamp again. So I've got some a little higher and some lower. Just like that. It doesn't really matter. There's no rhyme or reason to where the trees are. Just like a regular forest, they, they could be anywhere. And then I'm going to start coming down in front of those and I'm going to build up more trees. Now the cool thing is you can add as many trees as you like. I'm starting just with these, these couple of rows of trees. I'm not doing the very front yet. I'm just going to, I'm going to stamp a couple off and have them kind of more indistinct over in the background there. All right. Then I'm going to grab a sponge and I'm going to actually pop this into the white ink as well. And I'm going to actually add a bit more white over this. And I'm going to come down 
and I'm actually adding white that sort of goes down in between the trees and a little bit over them as well and you'll see the color of the the um, mossy meadow actually changes a little bit it becomes brighter um, which is kind of interesting and it means that we end up with trees that look a little bit different off into the distance there okay we can always go over a little bit later with um, with a brayer again if you decide you want it even more colored but I'm just adding a bit more white ink coming down and you can see these trees start to lose a little bit of their shape as well we can always go in and add some more if we want to all right so I'm kind of liking the way that's looking and then I'm actually going to add some more trees now what I want to do is I want my trees at the very front to be the darkest of all so what I got I did was I actually got my um, re-inker and I actually re-inked deciding where I'm going to add some re-inker just down here to the bottom of my ink pad I'm not going to do the whole ink pad I just want this part to be particularly inky And then you can see I'm going to get a very dark effect and actually quite like that because we've just added the ink some of the tree is dark and some is light so then this goes down at the front here and I'm going to keep adding some more distinct trees mm. Don't worry if they don't all look clear, they're not meant to, it's meant to look like a forest. Alright, sort of coming together. Now see how in between the trees here you get a bit more of the, the background cardstock coming through and that in itself also looks like kind of, um, like it could be a bit misty in those areas, a bit of mist coming down in there. Okay, if you decide you want to add any more trees up higher, I would stamp off and add a couple of extra trees. And those are going to be a little bit more distinct as opposed to these ones that with the white ink over them have become a little bit faded out. Do you kind of get the feel of a misty forest? I think it's really nice and very easy to do. So just a bit of white ink sponged. Um, maybe a little braid and then just the layers of the trees actually I'm thinking I would like one more tree kind of here there we go yeah that looks good okay you could just leave it like that and then stamp your sentiment. As you can see, I just stamped my sentiment here straight on. The sentiment I used on this original card is this beautiful Christmas blessings to you and yours. Isn't that nice? But today I'm actually going to use one of the sentiments from the most wonderful time set, seeing as this is, this is the set that I'm mostly looking at. And I'm thinking, will I have a Christmas tree? No, I think I'll have, hope you have a wonderful Christmas because that's nice and simple. And let's just pop that there and I'll just grab a block and bring that in actually I'm going to line it up a little bit better a little straighter so to do that I'm going to use my grid paper pop it on a line there and then pop my sorry about the back of my head that's better and then for this I'm going to use uh, soft suede because I'm actually going to pop this whole thing onto a soft suede panel just like that so I'm going to use soft suede ink which I think is nice and I'm going to uh, say I hope you have a Merry Christmas actually I just realized there's one other thing I can do I did do on one of the cards where will I put this just like that okay if you wish you could just leave it like this but if you like you can see 
I hope you can see here on my original cutter I added a tiny bit of navy blue brayering to the very top to look like maybe it could be a night sky and I've actually got a couple of ideas of variations of this that I'm going to um, I'm going to sh uh, work on over the next little bit and I might do videos on those as well so I want to do a night version <laughs> all right let's just uh, add a tiny bit of blue to the very top of this and I'm only adding a little bit but I just wanted to give the impression of a night sky there we go that looks great happy with that all right so I'm going to turn this over and I'm just going to use some adhesive I'm using the seal adhesive but you can use whatever you like and I'm going to pop this onto the soft suede panel which is slightly bigger and this will go right here just like that and then I've also got a piece of um, very vanilla cardstock which I've just cut in half and then fold it in half again to be my card base there we go and that's going to fit onto there so let's use a bit of seal plus for this one and then i have myself a little misty forest card isn't that easy what do you think I hope you like it I just think it's a really nice effect and we can always sponge a little bit more white over here if it's not quite misty looking enough but I just think it's a really simple effect with just one stamp which to me is absolutely amazing and it turns out really nice every single time each one is different but they're all beautiful have a great day guys wherever you are and I hope you enjoyed my card today. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel here and I'll be back with a new background or a new exciting technique for you very soon. Bye!